Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and this is the world's first 42 inch OLED gaming monitor. It's the new ROG PG42UQ from ASUS. It comes with a 4K OLED screen, up to 138Hz, VRR, HDMI 2.1 and a display port. It also has a large custom heatsink which helps with performance and prevents image burning, as well as this awesome aspect ratio controller to change the size of the screen. Today I'll be unboxing, setting up and giving you my first impressions on this dedicated gaming monitor. But any questions you have for my full review, please drop those below. So here's the box that it comes in and there is no denying that this looks like a gaming monitor, especially with the design and the logos that they've gone for. It's also a pretty square looking box which is unusual to what we've seen before. Okay, so as this is the 42 inch version, it can easily be lifted out by one person, although they do suggest two people do it. But this is a nice touch, so the accessories actually come in this little zip up pouch bag instead of the usual cardboard box or plastic bags that we see elsewhere. Inside the pouch it comes with pretty much every cable that you need to get up and running. There's the power cable, a display port cable, HDMI 2.1, the warranty card and quick start guide, four screws for the stand and a remote control. And then finally there's the metal stand which has some nice rubber feet on the bottom to prevent it from sliding on your desk and then fitting it is really easy. Just lay the monitor flat on your table, just making sure the bottom is overhanging very slightly, then you just line the four holes up before screwing. Now around the back we've got this huge plastic panel which houses all of the internals as well as the heatsink and the speakers. There's an ROG logo on the right side and it definitely has a gaming and more aggressive look to it to what we've seen before. And the top part is extremely thin as we've come to expect from OLEDs. But as you move down you can see the chunkiness of the bottom part where all those internals are. There are some vents across the top which are for the heatsink. And above that we've actually got a tripod hole which is designed for mounting a camera or any other accessory you might want to use. And then in the bottom right corner we've got the Harman Kardon logo which is for the internal speakers. On first impressions you might assume this can only be mounted to the provided stand. But it does actually have some hidden VESA holes for mounting it to an arm or a bracket and these are 300 by 300. As for the dimensions, I've put these on screen now along with a few others you might not find online. And when it comes to the connectivity or ports of this monitor, these are neatly hidden behind this magnetic cover. Simply pull it off and it reveals the available ports. Now these include two HDMI 2.0 and two HDMI 2.1 ports. These two are capable of full 48 gigabits per second bandwidth. There's a display port 1.4 and four USB ports, including one at the top and one at the bottom of the screen. Then across the bottom, there's also a headphone jack, which is a pretty good and well thought out placement for easy access. And one awesome feature, which has been massively overlooked by LG with their OLED TVs is a removable power plug. For cable management, there's a little clip here inside the cover, and then you can feed the cables either side of the cover once fitted. But behind the stand, there are no clips or trunken, so you probably will see the cables hanging down. Right, so we've seen the rear design, let's take a look at the front and see how that looks. Okay, so it's obviously carried over the gaming vibe with the metal feet and the NVIDIA logo on the side, although this can be removed. But what I like about this stand is the fact that it can be tilted very slightly. It'll move between 4 and minus 5 degrees, you can get it just the way you need it. And as for the frame and the bezels on this, they are stupidly thin. In fact, it's almost borderless when you look at the screen from the front. And as you turn around to the side, this is when you realise just how thin the frame or the display is. Across the bottom, not only is there the headphone jack, there's also this control box protruding from the screen. When it's on, it does show the ROG logo, but you can turn this off in the settings. But underneath there is a five-way joystick, and this controls the on-screen display. Okay, let's talk about the screen itself. So the PG42UQ is a 42 inch 4K OLED display, and that's got a 3840 by 2160 resolution. It supports everything you would expect from an OLED, including extreme black levels, vibrant colors, and an incredible view and angles. Now the brightness is marketed as 800 nits max, which is pretty standard for OLEDs. And on first impressions, it looks bright enough in my room for what I would normally show on it. But this next feature, if you haven't noticed already, isn't like normal OLEDs that we've seen before, and that's the fact that it has an anti-glare coating. Now you'll either love or hate this, but the biggest pro of an anti-glare or matte coating is it massively reduces the reflections. For me this means I can have it opposite my window while gaming, and I'm not going to see a mirror-like image, just a very slight glare, and it also helps with eye strain. For a monitor I think it makes sense to have a matte screen over glossy, but what do you think, which one do you prefer? Now this is still an OLED, so the image quality is incredible no matter how you view it. It offers true 10-bit colour and 98% colour accuracy, so this gives us a pretty vibrant picture overall. 
Brightness appears good, but ROG have an exclusive uniform brightness setting that keeps the brightness levels consistent. In theory, this will actually prevent the image from dimming when on a bright screen or a white image. I need to spend a little bit more time with this testing it out, as on the LG C2 and G2 models, the ABL is very aggressive when used as a monitor. Now this is a gaming monitor, so let's look at the gaming features for this. So it will do native 4K gaming, but it also supports 1080p and 1440p, something I've tested out over the last week on the PS5. It will do up to 138Hz when overclocked, so not quite the 144Hz that a lot of PC gamers are used to, but it's close enough but it does mean it will cover the 120Hz for both the Xbox Series X and the PS5. And as mentioned before, it does have VRR or variable refresh rate, which can actually be turned on and off on the monitor. Then there's ALLM and a 0.1 millisecond response time. I've tested a few games out over the last week, and as you would expect, they ran incredibly smoothly with no screen tearing or stuttering. And if you want to check out what the frame rate is while you're playing, you can actually turn this on on the monitor itself. It will then display it in the top right corner so you can see what frame rate you're getting. So my personal gaming monitor is the 32 inch Ultra Gear GQ950, which is probably the optimum size for my desk. But if you want that immersive gaming experience, the 42 inch looks awesome. Any story driven games or games like Gran Turismo 7 play so well on the screen of this size. You really are getting that Ultima OLED quality, but from a gaming monitor. Now, if you were worried about a 42 inch looking too big for certain games like FPS or Call of Duty, for example, you can actually adjust the aspect ratio on the monitor itself. And this is a really cool feature that lets you change the ratio to match a 24, 27 or 34 inch screen. That means when you don't want to use the full screen size, you can actually change it in the settings. So typically speaking, OLEDs can get quite hot and that can then affect the lifespan of the TV. To combat that, manufacturers usually cap the brightness while ROG have done something different. They've actually implemented a cooling solution in the form of a large custom heatsink. This is actually designed to keep the peak brightness as high as possible while still limiting burning. I think this is a feature that a lot of OLED TVs could learn from. Well, the UI and the menu on this monitor is as simple as you need it to be. It can be accessed either from the joystick under the monitor or on the remote control. From here, you can adjust loads of settings, including the picture settings, brightness, and HDR modes. Then in the gaming tab, you can turn on overclocking and VRR. You can also enable the FPS counter and a few other controls as well. Now, remember, this is a gaming monitor and not a TV. So this does not come with a TV tuner or downloadable apps. If you want to use this for watching things like Netflix or streaming services, you can, of course, just use your PC or game console or any other device but the remote on this is really nice so it's not very often that you see a remote control that comes with a monitor it means you can turn it on and off without fiddling underneath the monitor and of course you can bring up the on-screen settings a lot easier oh and before i forget this does have two 10 watt harman kardon speakers as well as a 15 watt woofer you can just about see them poking out under the screen now, most people probably won't use or need these speakers, but my son, for example, when he sits at my desk to play FIFA, having the speakers built in is far easier and better than using a headset. So what are my first impressions on this 42 inch OLED from ASUS? It is a pretty decent gaming monitor and could easily be one of the best in 2022. It's got the same capabilities that we've seen on most OLED TVs this year, but it's clearly been optimized very well for gaming. And you can see this with the inclusion of the display port, placement of the headphone jack, the large custom heatsink, and the overall design. I also think that 42 inch is a size that a lot of you will probably be interested in. And personally, I actually like the anti-glare screen as every gaming monitor that I've ever used at this desk has been matte. Glossy screens look nice of course, but I much prefer having that on a TV. Now over the next couple of weeks, I will be doing a full review of this monitor. But before I do that, I want to spend some serious time with it, not just a first impressions. I'm going to test out loads of games as well as that uniform brightness feature that they've introduced. If you have any questions about this monitor, please drop those below and I will answer that in the full review. And what's your first impressions on this gaming monitor? Do you think this could be the best one for 2022? Well, if you drop an OLED gaming in the comments, I will give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my PlayStation Vita video next, as that covers why it's still worth buying or playing a Vita in 2022. Thanks for watching, please like, sub and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.